So if you've been watching the show for a while, you know that we've done a lot of big things to this E36 in order to make it more of a rally car. Swap the transmission, build a roll cage, wheels, tires, suspension. So the question is, what's next? Oh, a handful of little things, that's what's next. Today we've got a few mods to make to the E36 that should make it a better rally car overall. And the good news is most of them are pretty cheap, but does that mean they'll be easy to install? Unlikely. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. Let's get to work. A big thank you to eBay Motors for sponsoring today's Money Pit. eBay Motors isn't just some online car dealership, they're much more than that. They're invested in making the sales cycle honest and trustworthy. One of the ways they're doing that is by offering the ability to send out licensed, trained inspectors to validate the seller's description and guarantee the car you're interested in buying is the car you're getting. Now, we didn't do that because I like taking gambles for the sake of good content, but you definitely should. It's also not just a marketplace for cars. eBay Motors is home to tons of diverse car parts and inventory. So skip the dealership and start car shopping from home by clicking the link in the description below. Who knows, you might find an E36 of your own. Now, let's get back to the pit. It was aggressive. All right, in case you're way behind, let me get you caught up. We bought a once stock BMW E36 and we've been modifying it to be our own DIY rally car. Now, of course, you can take a stock car off-road, but I wanted the thing to be better than that. I wanted it to be more reliable and more capable than a stock car. So we've been doing a bunch of DIY rally-inspired mods and checking out whether or not they've been worth all the time, money, and effort that they take. And today is gonna be no different. So here's what we got. First, we've got the least cheap thing. And these are new pedals. Uh, you can definitely get pedals for cheaper. I think a good set of pedals installed just how you like them can make the driving experience a lot better. So I'm really excited to get these in. Uh, and of course, some mud flaps. It's not a rally car without mud flaps. Speaking of rally stuff, We've got a wink mirror. This is a multi-panel mirror that basically spans the width of the windshield and gives you a lot of visibility behind and kind of off to the side, uh, which is really good, especially if you're in a rally race with traffic. So this will be a nice add. And then we've got the piece de resistance. We've got some period correct hella fog lights. We're gonna add some more rectangles to the front of the E36. Obviously, these are gonna help us see better at night. And they're also gonna look pretty cool. So we've got some wiring to do, probably some bracket mounting to make. And you know, while all these mods are relatively cheap and hopefully won't be too difficult to install, there is a lot to do here. So I'd say we should probably get started. I think the first thing we'll do is them pedals. All right, so a while back, I actually installed the gas pedal when we had to take the carpet out and remove the factory gas pedal anyway. So this just needs to go back in. So it's got a receiver down here that's bolted into the car. Then it just kind of makes a hinge at the bottom and at the top. Well, that thing is nice. And it's also nice because it gives me the ability to move where the pedal actually is with these holes here. I'm gonna basically tape them in place and then I'll mark where the holes need to be. Then I'll pull the pedals off, make those holes, and then bolt them up. So really what you're thinking about uh, when you're placing your pedals is, is what you're trying to do while you're driving and at that trying to drive fast and sometimes you're trying to rev match and uh, you know, heel towing, which really for me isn't actually so much a matter of heel towing, it's more like the side, my foot just splits on the pedals. And so if I've got really nice pedal placement, I can use the ball of my foot or a little bit more of the toe to give me some brake while I blip the throttle on a downshift, uh, you know, to match those revs. So getting your pedals just right makes that pretty easy and it makes driving the car feel a lot better because you can do exactly what you're trying to do whenever you try to do it. So I like to have, you know, a pretty small gap in between my brake and gas pedal. Uh, and as such, I'm gonna offset the brake pedal just a hair towards the gas pedal. Not much, just a little. And I think that'll feel real nice. It's a pedal. Okay, I'm gonna tighten that up and then we'll mark out the clutch pedal, drill those holes, and then we're uh, done here. Which, as long as nothing goes sideways, makes this one very easy. This was the least cheap, but maybe the most easy.
All right, we've got some nice pedals and they feel really good. I'm still debating on whether or not I want to try out the gas pedal shifted over a little, but we'll tweak that later. The install is done and that was really easy. Hopefully the rest goes that easily. Let's do the mud flaps next. Oh God. So I'm just gonna go around and kind of get them uh, mocked up where I'm gonna want them. I'll tape them into place and then we'll figure out how to actually mount them. But we gotta make sure they look good. The trick here is basically just making sure that our mud flaps are gonna do their job, which means that they basically cover the tread of the tire uh, in terms of width. So I want this thing to be sticking out wide enough to make sure that it covers you know, the working part of the tire, the tread. Uh, sticking out any further than that, it's not gonna do a whole lot. It's about finding the balance between what looks good and what's gonna do its job well. All right, that should hold things in place. Uh, now I'm gonna straighten the wheel out, jack the front of the car up, and figure out how to permanently mount these things. And that's the little gun. That's the three-eighths, boy. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna mark uh, kind of an outline on this mud flap where the body lands on the mud flap so that I can remove it and uh, figure out my mounting situation. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do that with a Sharpie, I suppose. Well, the inside is uh, gonna be really easy to mount too with some rib nuts, but the outside to mount it nice and sturdily might be a little bit more tricky. Okay, let's put this thing back up with new mud flap. <laughs> what? Where the rest of your line there go? What do you mean? It's actually how it was. When I got it, there was that bolt wasn't in there, or that screw. And I think this was just flapping in the wind against the tire. Okay, now I just need to go do all of this again over there, and then there, and then there. Really not difficult, slightly time consuming. No big deal. I'll get more of it later. They kind of look a little crooked because of the bend that they take because of like the contour of the liner to the bumper. Might drive me a little wild, but I'm just gonna live with it. All right, to install our wink mirror, the first thing you gotta do is get the old mirror off, which is luckily really easy in this. Just a quick twist to the left. So the next thing we gotta do is figure out how exactly to mount this thing, and to the roll cage might be the move. Okay, so I'm gonna use the uh, bracketry that came with this mirror, and I'm gonna weld it straight to our roll cage. I could use some screws, but I have a welder, so I think that's what we'll do. Okay, there's some bare metal. We can weld to that. Fleep! Or can I do this by myself? I believe in you. All right, Jerry, you wanna give us a hand? Come give your boy a hand. I just need you to hold something while I weld it. Yep. So I'm gonna want you to look right on at it. Okay. Stare directly into the... Big open eyes, as big and open as you can do them. So, uh, yeah, I like that. You're doing great. That's more improvement than my dad ever did. That's kind of what I figured, you know? All right, mirror is mounted. Now I'll just adjust it to my liking, tighten up this hardware, and that job is done. That was also pretty easy, thanks to this welder. That is factory fresh, baby. Now we got our new mirror mounted and we've got tons of visibility. Looks really cool and it's very sturdy. So with that done, it's time to do the last thing. Those fog lights. Let there be light, huh, Eddie? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Breathe in and out. 
Good. Mindfulness and controlled breathing are great practices for managing stress, but you know what else is? Going off-road. Find yourself and share in the chillness with this new shirt. Find yourself. Flowers, butterfly, toadstool, frog, all around you, all around Mother Earth. And only $29.98. So much cheaper than $30. Available now at DonutMedia.com. Go find yourself the chillest shirt we've ever made. Namaste, my dudes. Namaste, James. What? Who said that? <laughs> We're back at it, and all we have left to do is wiring the fog lights, which is probably gonna be the most tedious thing we've had to do thus far, but it's not gonna be hard. All we have to do is install a relay with a switch so I can turn on and turn off the fog lights. We've done this before. Relays are very handy things in terms of electronics, and we're gonna install another one today. A relay is basically a switch that lets us use a small amount of power to control a large amount of power. So with our little switch in the cabin, we'll be able to turn on our big old fog lights. The first thing I'm gonna do is find somewhere to mount the relay under the hood, uh, somewhere close to power and nice and easily accessible. And then we'll mount the switch in the cabin and then we'll work on wiring everything up. Yeah, it's a great shot, great shot, get that. All right, the switch is wired up. Now all we gotta do is run power to those lights and put bulbs in them. All right, we gotta make a couple little holes to run the wires through to the fog lights. So that's what we're gonna do, get the old drill out. Okay, now this wire is gonna go from the relay to the fog lights, supplying the power. Okay, so our power wires are now sticking out the front bumper. Now I need to make a couple little ground wires to go from the lights and ground back to the chassis. So I'm gonna use the excess I just cut off for that. That's cool though. Okay, we're all wired up. The fog lights are finally officially installed. Now we just gotta see if they work. Let's fire these things up. Key on, green switch, flicked. All right, let's see if they work. Ow, Christ. All right, we've got some working fog lights. Now I still am gonna need to adjust these and align them. Uh, we've done that on this show before where we basically pull up to a wall with some masking tape and adjust our lights based on that. So I still gotta do that, but uh, at a glance they don't look too misadjusted. So this has been a pretty successful couple days. We got a lot of little but impactful mods done and it's made the car, I think, uh, a much better rally car. Now we can do stuff at night and see a little bit better. We've got a mirror so we can see all the things going on behind me. We've got pedals for good car control, good shifts, good braking, and uh, we've got mud flaps to keep the rocks on the ground where they belong. So, I think that's gonna do it for this week. I hope you guys had a good time watching. I hope you learned a thing or two. And as always, you can go follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and follow Donut at Donut Media while you're there. And I'll see you guys Wednesday after next.